Welcome back. My name is Kaz, and I sit upon the throne of silence within my ancestral deepness. We're watching Let's Play Sonic 2006 in what I call Let's Play Let's Play Sonic 2006 2012. This is a companion piece to the 15th video in the epic. We'll start on 3, 2, 1, play. And I have to adjust my earpieces here because they're, they're wrong. They're digging into my ears because they've been designed for pain. The Kingdom Hearts would be a much better play than this. We should have done that. We did do that a couple times. We should do that again. I think, uh, I think it's about the right time for a good Kingdom Hearts or Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough, something like that. Silver? His name is actually Silver? Huh. Radical. Hit the pad that shoots you to the next pad that shoots you to the next place. Use homing attack bunch on the monsters and the, the, the robot monsters. Wait, what? Huh. That's kind of neat. I, um, all right, goes careening off into the distance. Wow, 81%. The end is in sight. Might actually get through this. I don't think that eagles take... Uh, whatever. Oh, fun fact. I learned from... Uh, oh, you can be inside tails. That's that's monstrous. I learned from a marine that they used to refer to their paychecks as eagle shit. That's, that's all. That There's no... Um, there's really nothing more to that story. You can you can skip that. That is the second time we've referred to Castlevania. That same one, too. Let's see, which one was that? As Juiced Belmont. Let's see. Harmony of Dissonance. <laughs> the title that enrages the most people that I know. Causes the most rage, I guess. That is truly bizarre. Would you just homing attack it or something? You, yeah, plots. There we go. See, pretty neat.
Well, probably not. I mean, why would you change anything? It looks all right. I mean, albeit with the same terrible controls, physics, enemies, concept, and homing attack that's in the regular game itself. Tons of checkpoints, too. Uh, how's Sonic gonna leap his way out of this one? And there they are, right back on the rails. Sonic the Train Hog, riding them rails. Oh, he did... Ah, uh, crap! See, this is what happens when you, you live and hang out with the same people for so long, you'd start making the same jokes. Ah, now he's actually made the joke that I made a bit ago. It's great. Great, now you're now now I've opened the door for people accusing me of, of pre watching these, which is absolutely not the case, but I mean I can't prove that. So, I'll just have to live with it. No! Tag team. Uh, what? Ah, so that fun part of Sonic where you walk around gradually and take a bunch of boxes with you. Wow, you can pick up Gordos? That's pretty cool. <laughs> they popped in next to you, nerd. jump to the other why not go right there like so jeez No, oh, you'll have to hit him with a box. If only. The eagle, maybe? Yeah, it would have been a, it would have been a funny touch in um, in the boss fight with Silver if they had had rings that you knock out of him. So you do like the the boss fight is not like your rings in his health, but a kind of ring tug of war between the two of you.
Then again, that risks being clever or adventurous in concept, so... Probably not for this game. It's not like you're in danger of failing or anything. Because you can just, you know, you get bumped over and it's like, oh, ugh, I'll pick up the ring that is mine that I pick up and then you're, you're fine. Like this. Oh, I got hurt, but wait, no, a ring, I am fine. It was always so stupid and lame. Well, sure, why not? Stairs. Oh, a big one. This should ruin him with complexity. That's pretty neat. I think it's better maybe as a concept more risky and adventurous like i said before i mean um go somewhere that was wait what why did that happen? Where are they going? Kingdom Valley. I didn't notice the name of this place before. I will deposit you here. Welcome to Planet Harry Potter. Oh, it's a video game. Chill out. Turbo confuse. <laughs> Once again, touch the checkpoint and immediately perish.
It's almost like no one tested this. Like, they designed the levels and then planned their route or whatever. And then, like, tested all the routes and all the alternate routes and got good at it. And they're like, oh, yeah, this, this works fine. But then they never put it in the hands of people who were just total neophytes or did not design it. So... Yeah, this is what we end up with. Weird moments like that where, you know, sometimes crashing through stained glass is the right thing, and other times when it's it just puts you through in, in the wrong place. I mean, flying around in these huge, cool-looking environments, that's possibly fun. But there's just nothing there to attach you to what's going on in the first place. Lots of stuff happens that's dumb and takes too long. Hmm. Matter of fact, I think I've seen this castle in Demon's Souls. He had to get to get on the rope. I guess this is before they invented the little sidestep when you're running fast. I mean, that's what the Howl Room always was, right? A lot of the little bugs that they're talking about like that were actually... He activated the bounce. Uh, were actually designed in as a, as debugging in the first place. I mean, the, that's where a lot of uh, codes, like enter key codes, come in. But, um, you know, old sprite and tile games are really robust. They just, they don't have room on the cart for like error checking features so if a uh, or sanity checks so if a if a game state occurred that was not right it didn't have anything to to check for that so you could get some rather infamous and hilarious glitches to happen nowadays we just get crappy things like this just like clipping through errors i want them to encounter an error right now so that I can uh, I can go on about it, but it looks like they're just being shot by robots. <laughs> Try light speed dashing, you plots. I 
Yeah, he's been saying that for years. This time he's going to light speed dash. No. Come on. You have a homing attack. How could you fail? What is he talking? Capitalist assassins? What, what are we on about here? Maybe this is a mutual delusion. I've heard of these before. What happens is, instead of just going insane by yourself, which can also happen, and which you're you're kind of watching happen to a human right now in a meta sense it's like one yomi layer removed from what's going on but no you know, this is four men in a room gradually losing their minds together and the little pieces of their minds you'd think that one could could catch the, the piece as it flies off like so many bricks into the distance but instead each Peace like an avalanche knocks into the next. Tiny bits of sand slide into rock, pebbles into stones, stones into boulders, and boulders into the deep, and now there is yelling. Wait, did, did Medibot actually leave there? I mean, at this point in the playthrough that they're in, it should be something like 4 a.m. Medibot should be, like, beyond asleep at this point. He's always so sleepy. I don't understand how he's even moving and talking still. So when he says he'll leave like that cavalierly, I mean, it would mean like driving back to his house at that point. Uh... But anyway, my point with that is that Medibot is terrified of driving in general and uh, terrified of driving when he's tired even more. Maybe he's afraid of sleep. That would explain a lot. Sure you can, it's right there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Extra spiteful is my doing this. Oh, you're talking like that just because there was a rainbow on the screen? Someday, 
mankind will not need symbols like that anymore. Rainbows can just be rainbows. Why not? Naturally occurring. Pretty cool looking. Then there was a part where he ran on water for a while. And maybe if I turn my head this way, it'll make more up. Oh, nope. Wait, progress is still at 81%. What, what? Oh, no. Oh, I think they lost more than they know. It's a valid complaint. Oh no. Wait, he has to do all the all the silver, I guess. Yeah. They called him platinum a couple times, I think out of I don't know. Despite making things up. I'll be well acquainted with that character in due time, I imagine. What an incredible setback. Maybe not. Maybe it goes a lot quicker because you know where everything is and you know the stage's tricks and maybe you should have done like a practice run on everything. Not gone straight through. But I've made that complaint before and I merely renew it here. Nope, a box. What? What? Huh? Hmm. I wonder if there have been bouncy ropes in other Sonic games. Might be a legit in innovation. Although that can't be right. A silly gun shot from the silly gun. Kingdom Valley, waiting for the loading screen. Now just run past him, just run past him. No! I wanted you to try running past him.
chin. <laughs> That's cute. Spawned in right on top of you. I'd like to telekinesis, but I wouldn't know what to say. He's a, a hedgehog? By the way, this always bugs me in movies and, and video games. Rockets and, and missiles go really, really fast. Like, in real life. So, anytime I see a rocket going slowly, it's very annoying. And those are, um... Those are especially slow-flying rockets, and so especially annoying. Why are there spike balls bouncing down on his head? He's actually getting better at this part, too. It's almost unthinkable. Yeah. It's actually a lot to do with the shoes. Uh, there was a friend of mine who had to go through a couple airports in a day. I mean, this this usually happens in America for um, long flights. The cheapest flight, or even sometimes the only available flight, is going to be one that involves getting on a lot of connectors. I'm sure this happens in other countries too, but America has a size to it, and you know, you might uh, be traveling across multiple states, or even the entire coastline or something, just for a, a flight to, to get home. So, um, this friend of mine was flying out of um, sort of the, the Midwest and going to the East Coast, all right? And he had a, a couple of connecting flights and had to go in and out of security a couple times. This was, uh, um, was post-2011, or I'm sorry, uh, post-2001. So, uh, the this was the... Uh, I guess, modern implementation of air flight, traffic safety, and all that. So he got, uh, there, there were random security screenings. That's the, the point of this whole thing. And um, they would, you know, they have a bunch of people in line, and everyone goes through some scanning. And every, like, 1 in 10 or 1 in 13 or whatever people would be pulled aside for, like, extra screening or whatever. And um, this friend of mine got, uh, you know, goes through the line at security, and he gets picked for the, like, extra screening. And they, you know, they have him take off his shoes, they look through his bags, they pull him aside. Okay, so everybody going through the line, he gets pulled off to the side the first time. Fine. Goes to the next airport, hours later. He's tired, it's a long flight, it's loud, he can't sleep. And he has to go through another security line. I think the only reason that he had to um, leave, like, a secured space in the first place was that he wanted to go outside and have a smoke. But really, I don't know, because in my own experiences in airports, I was, like, in to security, and then as long as you were, no matter where you went on, like, in the plane or like off into the airport there was like a zone that you remained in and they didn't have to scan you again but for one reason or another he had to go through security a second time and a second time there was a line and for a second time that same day he got picked for the extra security check and pulled aside and they had him take off his shoes and all that jazz and then um, you know he got onto his connecting flight and went to yet another airport in the same day. And for, again, whatever reason, he had to 
go through security at this third airport. And for a third time in the same day, he got picked for the extra security sweep and um, pulled aside and they took his shoes off. And this time when they were taking his shoes off, he said, you know, what? what's the deal? Um, this has happened to me two times already today. This is not random. Why do you guys p keep picking me? And the um, uh, the security agent said, "It's your shoes." And my friend looked at his shoes, and they were, you know, he had had them for a while. It was this old pair of Skechers, and you know, he had he had just worn and loved them to death, right? They were just these old shoes that he had had for a long time, and they were they were worn and they were ragged, and that's what did it. They saw a man who was wearing ragged shoes and they picked him that was one of their um, their one of their metrics so any time that i would hear about you know screening people based on like what they looked like or where where it looks like they came from i think that's uh that's overblown and gets a lot of media attention because it's kind of like, it's edgy and it's like, oh, no, they're discriminating based on yada yada. No, they have way more realistic and down-to-earth um, screening tactics and criteria. And it's stuff like how your shoes look. I guess what I'm saying is wear good shoes if you're going on planes. I mean, I had a similar problem because I was wearing boots this one time and they were uh, they were really good boots, right? And uh, they're steel bottomed and steel toed and steel heeled. They're uh, really good boots for working, keep my feet protected in in tough conditions. And uh, yeah, the guys at the airport really don't like those boots. I uh, I try not to wear them when I'm gonna when I know I'm gonna fly for that reason, because they look at my boots and they're like, oh, yep. And it sets off all of their magnetic scanners and, and all their metal detectors and all that. I've even had one actual uh, actual police officer, not not just some uh, security guy at the airport, tell me, "Yeah, no, those look like pretty good boots. Great for working, not good for airports." He said that to me. I'm like, "Oh, okay. I'll keep that in mind." It's got to be the shoes. All right, now up to the part that Pokey Captain failed a bunch. All right, he'll get it this time though. Yeah. Okay, it's been 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 a mere ten minutes up to this point. So just get to the part that's gonna kill you. He might actually succeed. That would be all right, I guess. Yeah, the whole layout of this place is kind of like Ganon's castle in Ocarina of Time. You know, there's a big round thing, circular bits falling. That's really my only linkage to it. The door had a draw distance that made it look like it was open. That's that's pretty special. Well, it was long and boring. It had lengthy stretches of just flat area. Eh? Oh, checkpoints. I want, to, I want to live in a world where checkpoints are irrelevant. Where they no longer need to happen. Where there's no such thing as, like, quick save. It's just, it's, it's outmoded and unnecessary. And yet, I like games that have lives in them. At least in the, in the classic sense. It really felt like something 
You know, it felt like a complete design of the game of Castlevania 1 that you had lives and that life was your your chance to do. And the whole game was designed around that, you know, as a central mechanism. And that's what made it good. It's not that the idea of lives itself is an inherently bad one. It's that it's a design corner and you can take it design around it. In a game like this, where lives don't make as much sense, and they keep asking for things like quick save or uh, checkpoints, a checkpoint is really just a way to say life without saying it. It's something the worse for that. Like, because it's taken out of the hands of the player's knowledge, it's not as complete a mechanic. Uh, I need to formalize my thoughts about checkpoints and quick saves before I launch into a diatribe against them. Especially not now, while I'm trying my damnedest to not listen to my friends here while uh, also paying enough attention to them that I can tell what they're saying going on. That's, that's the worst part of this whole idea from, uh, from my perspective, is that I'm really terrible at talking over people because I'm rather polite in general. And so I try not to speak when other people are talking, which is what I have set out to do for hours on end here. Oh, so in that part you just had to run and keep running. Oh, okay. Well, you have two more times through this if you really fail. And that was the easiest mock speed section yet, is what he means. Oh. Oh, right. Success. Okay. I, I kind of get into these torpors. 